variety of ways, and so it's exciting to uh, see it come to fruition before I croak. Uh, so today, um, you know, we've been doing sort of the Fulton construction thing over and over, but today we're going to have our guest, uh, Randall Morrison, who's right back here, wearing his Fresno State shirt, probably, and uh, he is the project manager for construction management for the project. And uh, when he started on it, he was like a 17-year-old shiny-faced <laughs> kid who uh, they tricked into doing this. But uh, we talked really early on, and I said, this is a project of a lifetime. And he said, I know it. And that's how he's treated it all the way through. Um, so, and I've watched, I mean, the incredible amount of work that he's put into it, and I don't even know all of it. I mean, it's been years in the making, and now that the project is happening, it's, um, and he's going to describe more of this in detail before we, or as we go, but uh, this is not a project that you do the plan, it's not like a suburban street somewhere. Here's the plan for the street, contractor do it, sign off, everything's done. This is like daily uh, changes and redesigns and all of that because as much as they did ground penetrating radar and all that other stuff, it's just a whole mystery what's below the surface, right? Every day something. Yep. So uh, with that, I'll introduce Randall. He can uh, talk about his um, history, schooling, coming up through the ranks, and uh, a little bit about himself. And then uh, he's a good outdoorsman, too. <laughs> and, um, and then I'll uh, talk about the history of the project a little bit. Well, thanks. Uh, so yeah, my name's Randall Morrison. I'm from Fresno, born and raised. I did go to Fresno State for my undergrad in civil engineering, and I've been working for the city for about eight years, a little over eight years, and I've been working on Fulton, the Fulton project for a little over three years now. And when I came on board, there wasn't really a design, it was, it was all in concept at that point. We had uh, alternatives, and we had to take those alternatives, analyze them as quickly as possible, and get it ready to go to construction. And so the project is very interesting. It's very challenging, as Greg mentioned. Um, every day is a new day. Um, when I came on board on the project in 2013, with the alternatives, we were in the process of bringing on the consultant team to take it from the alternatives through the design. And the alternatives that we had were uh, the plan you see here today, alternative one, which is a straight, typical downtown street one lane in each direction with parking. Uh, the second alternative was called the vignette option, and it, uh, the concept was to meander the street around the existing features and try to preserve as many of the existing features as possible. Uh, that created several challenges. But once we got into the design and started laying out the street and uh, looking at it, it created more challenges um, than we expected when it was first uh, in concept. And then alternative three was to rebuild them all the way it was, uh, a full reconstruction. So the, the alternative one that you see here today is, is much different than the original concept. Uh, the original concept was your standard downtown street. It really didn't provide room for uh, reconstructing the fountains or uh, putting, well, it, the plan was still to put as much of the artwork back in place either within proximity of the mall area uh, but with this alternative, we were able to shift the street, and I'll go into the, some of the design features, but we were able to shift the street, create a larger sidewalk on one side, which created more of a, a promenade feel. Um, but it allowed us to reconstruct 16 of the fountains, put them back in the streetscape, and all the artworks going within the same boundaries of the reconstruction. And um, it met all the... the uh, I guess the design requirements of alternative one, but it took alternative two and incorporated all those other design features like 
the fountains in our work. Um, so when we're looking at the, the alternatives, alternative two, the meandering street created a lot of safety concerns, uh, didn't provide as much parking. There were a lot of <coughs> um, just difficulties. We, we laid out, we, it's interesting, we actually laid out a demo uh, near City Hall once we tried to lay out the street around the existing features. We had several vehicles at the time and we laid out the, the curves and it just felt really unsafe. Even if you, were, if you were driving, it felt unsafe. If you were standing on the edge of the sidewalk, it felt unsafe because you had vehicles like pointed towards you. Um, even bike. though we were designing it for a very low speed, it still just it didn't feel comfortable. And we wanted it to feel comfortable. Um, so that's why, in the end, we ended up recommending alternative one because we still were able to preserve all the artwork and uh, preserve many of the design features from the original design. And uh, so from that point in 2013, we had a consultant team on board uh, in August, and we were on a very fast timeline. Uh, by November, we had a full alternatives analysis that looked at all three alternatives, had the uh, preliminary designs for all three alternatives, uh, engineer's estimates. We had a, uh, part of that plan was looking at the artwork, we had the existing conditions, all the existing conditions laid out of each art piece recommended treatments that needed to be done for each piece. We looked at all the existing trees, so it was a full arborist report to analyze the, the health of the trees. Uh, it was a very in-depth document. And so from that point, we really had, that's when we, we uh, made our recommendation uh, to move forward with one specific alternative in the design. Uh, so that's, that got us to February 2014 where City Council adopted Alternative 1, um, ad adopted our Environmental Impact Report, and that was our kind of our notice to proceed to, to move forward with design. So the design team, and, and the design team, just to put it in perspective, uh, typically on a street project, we have two, three consultants on the team uh, covering the different aspects. On this team, we have 10 consultants looking uh, Anywhere from the civil to the landscape architecture, we have uh, a fountain sub that designs the fountains. Their, their ex expertise is just working on fountains. We have uh, MJM Management was a, a space consultant. They take care of large public spaces in San Francisco and other cities. And so this team was a very large team, put a lot of effort into uh, thinking through the project, making sure that it it uh, met all our all our desires. It's, we're still designing it to be a, a special place. We want to design it so we can open up the road and then shut it down for events. Uh, we still wanted to provide that pedestrian friendly environment and have a really a complete street that meets uh, all modes of transportation. So um, with that I'll get into the, some of the design features. Uh, you can see the, the bands here. Uh, that's pretty much replicating the historic uh, banding, the seated aggregate bands. Those are going to be reinstalled throughout. Uh, like I mentioned, 16 of the 21 original fountains are being reconstructed and put back into the streetscape. We have uh, several of the existing mature trees are still being incorporated. Some of the ones that are being removed, or most of the ones that are being removed either weren't healthy, they were in the streetscape area, um, or they just weren't the right species. So one of the biggest things that uh, is going to change is the type of trees. So, something that's less messy, like the, the olive trees outside of Thieves, um, getting rid of those species that are high maintenance trees. Uh, a lot of the, you see the double rows of trees. Those are going to be more uh, taller growing trees, more, uh, I don't know, what's the word? Vertical. Vertical yeah. type of tree. Not so Column. Much. Yeah, not so much uh, canopy. Canopy. Right, so they're not, yeah. Vertical, yeah. Uh, so those are a lot of the design changes on the on the trees. You'll notice uh, at each block, we have mid-block crossings in place, so it's still pedestrian friendly. It's still gonna have access uh, easily. Uh, you'll notice at Tulare and Fresno Street, uh, it's interesting striping in the intersections because we have what's called a pedestrian scramble. So those are being designed to have a pedestrian only phase on the signal, um, which allows people to cross diagonally in any direction. It's much more uh, 
pedestrian friendly that way. Uh, it also helps with traffic because you don't have conflicts with vehicles and pedestrians going at the same time. Have any of you seen that before? Yeah. There's one up by Fresno State at San Jose and uh, Cedar. Pasadena. Seems, yeah, Pasadena has some on the main intersections. It's, it's New York. Cool. Yeah. It's a common one, Times Square. Um, they're, yeah, they're, they're not very common in Fresno. The one near Fresno State was our first one that's only a year, year and a half old. But it, it'll work well in this environment. So how do you want to stop if everyone goes at the same time? It'll it'll still have a signal. It'll say something. It'll say yeah. it's a red, I guess. Right. Yeah. It'll still have a traffic signal to stop you know, yeah. vehicles, and then you'll still have your walk signs on. Them. That means everyone go back or no more across. It. Right. Right. Just like a typical crosswalk. So instead of doing that and that. You just cut across and do that. Yeah, so shortcut, I call it. Everything shortcut. that's easier for pedestrians means there are more pedestrians. So the mid-block crossings you can see like right here that he was describing, <coughs> those are only like 20 feet. So, I mean, you, you feel really safe as a pedestrian when you only have to walk a short distance across the street as opposed to like how Van Ness is over here where it's like five lanes and when you're looking, that car that's a half a block away, when you start, it's like <laughs> on you before you know it. So, is, are those lighted to uh, no. alert uh, traffic? No, no, no there, won't, there won't be indicators. But it's so one other thing to talk about lighting at nighttime. This area is going to be well lit, very well lit, more than any other downtown street, more than any other street in the city. Uh, our our lighting levels were designed to be at a higher level for events and for people to feel feel safe. I don't think, so there's challenges with those indicators. Uh, you have high pedestrian volumes that are gonna be going all the time. They have long-term maintenance um, issues. I Honestly, it's such a narrow street, it's gonna be safe to cross. It's, uh, so to go on the, the narrow street, we have 11 foot lanes and it's actually, uh, more like a nine foot lane, nine feet of asphalt, and then you have a two foot gutter pad. So it's gonna feel really narrow for the vehicles, but it's gonna create <coughs> very low speeds. Uh, we have parking on both sides, parallel parking. And um, the east side has a 28 foot sidewalk. So that shift that I was talking about, it uh, shifts the center line over. So there's 28 foot on one side, 14 foot on the other, which is still a very large downtown sidewalk. <coughs> uh, the, See. So this is 14, 14 plus a curve. So. Yeah. So it's twice this on the other side. Right. Yeah. Quite sure. So the trees aren't designed to give shade at all? Or? No, that, no, there's still going to be oh. plenty of shade. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's where you see it's the just, double rows. They're, they're more columns, I think that's right. the word you're using. So you still get the shade because they're, they're, uh, they're staggered. There's more trees, the total number of trees is higher than what's existing today. It's just different species. So we fit in the double row. So it, it's just a different, there'll be plenty of shade. Um, even with the existing trees and when we walk, you can see uh, the contractor has removed all the trees that, that are gonna be removed. So the ones that are still in there are the ones that uh, we are uh, keeping. And you can see that there's still the large canopy. So it's a, it's a variety, it's a variety. There's still gonna be plenty of shade. I have a question. Okay, does that mean stores will be open later? Would you say from eight to nine? I would say that that's is that possible, goal, right? Is the with good lighting yeah. and security? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. That and easy work. access and okay, higher that's good. visibility. That's a good thing. Yeah. That is that is a very good thing. So the living room. So the court cases are over now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I'm wondering, did that take any money away from making our mall more beautiful? Do you guys have to use money? Like that? Uh, no, the uh, fighting the lawsuits was separate. Okay. It wasn't. It didn't okay. take into uh, or didn't dip into the, the project budget at all. Yeah. So we, we kept that completely separate, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Is there seating? There there will still be some seating, a lot less than the existing pedestrian mall, uh, but there will be seating. So all the 
the mosaic benches. So I don't know if you're familiar with the mosaic benches, but those um, those are all still going to be in the new streetscape, and they'll have benches in front of them. So that'll be uh, 18 benches total on those. And then at the mid-block crossings, there's also benches at the mid-block crossings. So it's a lot less, but there's still still seating available. Is there a children's playground? No, the uh, the two top lot areas are being removed. Those aren't going back into the new streets again. Will meter, meter change a little bit on the weekends? Will it go back to paying? If, if business looks good, will that make, tell the city, oh, we'll need to make some money on the weekends on the meter? Is that possible? Yeah. That could happen. Most likely. Yeah. Um, we, we're still going through the, the parking policy. Um, you know, a lot of that's going to just evolve once the street's in, in place and more businesses move in and you know, more people are living downtown. And so we don't have all those answers right now. But okay. And the meters will be able to be changed and programmed and all of that. So we can adjust. Um, most of those are going away. There is still what was one. Question? The, pergolas. The pergolas. Oh, the pergolas. So, yeah. yeah, one of those is, is going back in. What's the pergola? Like the arbors? Arbor yeah. Oh. Any Arbor other questions? <clears throat> Cycling? Any uh, bicycle yeah, parking lots or bike lanes? Or? So, the street being designed with very narrow lanes, real slow speed, um, the idea that there's, there's not bike lanes, they'll be shared bike lanes or share it with the vehicle because it'll be very low speed safe. Um, as far as bicycle parking, there's going to be plenty of bike racks throughout the, the project. We have, um, I don't know the exact number, but it, there's several on every block. You are using the wave. You are using the wave. Uh, no, it's a little bit different. It's more, it was designed or specced out by our architect to, to blend in with the other site features. So it's, it's not the a typical one you see. Nobody likes the way. <laughs> the really thick ones. Worse, but you can't get your life and walk around. Are you uh, allowing bikes on the sidewalk? Uh, well, I don't think they'll be. It's a policy right now for downtown is no bikes are allowed on the sidewalk. On the sidewalk. That's the only area in town that they're not allowed on sidewalks. Just on the full wall right now, you can bike. Right. Currently, but, yeah, yeah, right. But after that, but after that, I'd be surprised if they lost. A few years ago, you couldn't even ride your bike on the football. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but then they had a new sign agency. Yeah. It was controversial. Fresno B editorialized against it. <laughs> the, uh, too many pedestrians would be run over by bikes. <laughs> so yeah, that, huh? that's a downtown policy. Then I'm sure that would apply to Florida right. as well. Do you see a parade happening Ooh, yeah. down the street sometime? And maybe Parades, like events. One of the main things that we looked at was still maintaining that event space. So during the alternatives analysis and the design, we looked at each block and how it could accommodate different sized events and laid out the vendor booth spacing. Uh, the electrical system in here is very complex and it's designed that way to accommodate the event. So there's going to be a lot of events though. It's still going to be that main main street so we can we can close it, have an event, open it back up to traffic. We have uh, bollards designed throughout the project to be able to close the street. I'd like it to have every nationality in Fresno. I'm Armenian of sin. I'd like to have a genocide, you know, Armenian. Mm -hmm. Pro, it's not a pro well, you could call it a protest I guess. <laughs> another country I won't name. Right. But using that as an analogy, every nationality would be great to have a parade. Have a, a yeah, well they, definitely events I mean, and um, you know, celebrating all the different cultures from ethnic cultures yeah. to music cultures to food cultures, car cultures bike cultures, outdoor record. I mean, everything that you can imagine that's part of who we are and what we do would be celebrated. So one of the things that we designed, uh, I say we because it, it was a change to the original, but we have removable ballards in every major block so that we can do an event that's this big or we can do an event that's 
the full 